Item number two, review teacher demonstration on CAM simulation. You have a download Panther lid and Panther base uh, inventor parts. So you can click on that, access my Google Drive. Um, the first thing is the Panther lid. You have to generate code for the bottom and the top. So um, we're going to go ahead and download that file, open it up in Inventor. It's called Panther Lid. Okay, so you can see uh, we had a student do Panthers on hers with an initial for her mother, but she's making this for her mom. So you're gonna, I'm gonna just show you how to take that out and then add your design and then go through the simulation portion. Okay, so it opens up in CAM. This tab is CAM, and so you have to go back to. 3D model, select here for model, and here's your browser bar. If you scroll all the way down, you can see the extrusion 13 is the Panther. So if you select the plus sign next to it, you can now see the sketch and the extrusion, cut extrusion that was used to make that. So all you have to do is delete it. Right click on the extrusion and select delete. It asks you if you want to delete your sketch, you, you can say OK. Now, um, all you would need to do at that point is right click on that surface, do a new sketch, and then sketch in your own design on what you want to do, and it should cut that. Okay, so but we're going to use the Panther as, as the example for today. So, Once you have your extrusion, okay, this is extruded at minus 0 0.05 inches. Okay, each area was closed, closed profile of each area. That's why I was able to select it and cut it down. Make sure to cut it down. I'm going to select CAM and go right into simulation. Select CAM here as well and go into my simulation. And first step is setup. So under setup, It's going to wrap the stock around your product. So you need to go to the second tab, stock tab, scroll down. Oh, no, not scroll down. You can scroll down to review what information is defaulted. But you need to select from solid. From solid, you can now select your part, and it'll wrap the stock around those dimensions of your part. Go back to the first tab called Setup, and now select Stock Box Point, and you want to make sure that you select the Stock Box Point that puts the Y axis along the three and a quarter inch side, and the X axis along the four and a quarter inch side, and then the, your Z is pointed up. That's what the CNC machine references. If you don't, you might have to do a couple things. You might have to uh, use the view cube, rotate it around to find that spot. You might have to go back to your model. I'm going to select OK. And there's my setup. Okay, But if, if you don't have that setup, you might have to go back to your model, select your Panther model here under 3d model you can select modify and move bodies so what that allow me do to do is select here, I'll move it up here so you can see a little better select here rotate about a line Look for your origin, and I can now rotate on the X, Y, or Z axis on any angle that I choose. 
So you may need to do that to get your X, Y, and Z oriented correctly. Once that's complete, in this case I don't need to do that because mine is already set up as you can see properly. We'll just go straight back to CAM and continue along the process. So all we did so far really was just make sure our setup has X, Y, and Z right on our, our stock. Next, we're going to go ahead and engrave using the CAM 2D milling it's called 2D Pocket and there it is. If you highlight over the tools you can get more information on that but 2D Pocket and all these settings come up. We're going to input the settings. So the first thing is we need to select a tool. I know I want to use an engraver tool. So you can go look under type and look at all the different types of tooling. Um, you can also search for engraver and you'll come up with this one. Engraver tool. Now once you select your engraver tool, you have to put the settings in that I provided you. By right clicking, edit, that tool, and you can go through all these tabs to make sure that you select the right settings that I provided you on the process PowerPoint. Okay, So just make sure that you input all the tool settings. All I did was use a caliper, measure our tooling that we had and input it in and shared it with you. So all these tabs, um, generally feed and speeds need to be 3000 RPMs, feed rates all need to be 9 inches per minute, your cutter dimensions um, need to be input, it's a very small diameter uh, cutter, um, flute lengths, shoulder lengths, body lengths, tapered mill, shaft diameter. Uh, give it tool number five so your code will reference T5 in CNC motion and disable the coolant. We're not going to use coolant because we're not cutting a metal. We're cutting a soft material that doesn't require coolant. So once that's all set up you select OK. and select that tool and then you'll see it in the simulation. Next step, I want to make sure my bottom height has an offset of minus 0 .005 and you may have to play around with that number but it should work for us on this project. Minus 0 .005 and what that means is that that bottom surface is going to be uh, the bottom surface of your engraving engraved area. And I believe that's the only settings we're going to change. Now it asks you to select the bottom reference of your pocket so you have to zoom into your model and select all the areas that you're going to engrave. Now if you made areas that are smaller than the diameter of your cutter tool, then it's not going to simulate, it's not going to be able to engrave. So you didn't design around the constraints, uh, the tooling constraints. So you, need, you probably need to go back to your model and redesign it. Once the pockets are selected, select OK. You'll, you'll notice a percentage up here. It, it's uh, going through a process of uh, coding all that. And now that it's complete, you can see the tooling uh, enter in and, and go through the cutting and the engraving process. And now we can select that pocket and now select simulate and play. And you can speed it up, slow it down, but you can analyze from all different angles using the view cube. So right now it says it's cutting below, above the surface. So we have to set that depth lower than minus 0 .005 because that, that didn't work for us. 
and, and you can see um, it's not going below the surface, right? So you can analyze your simulation and make changes as necessary. But you can tell it's generally getting everything except for the depth. So I'll close that. I'll go back to my pocket, right click, edit. Again, look at the heights in the bottom height. I'm now going to consider minus 0 0.05, which is the same as what I cut extruded in the model. It's regenerating, so you got to wait till it's complete. And then you can re-simulate it by selecting that pocket and simulating it. Now you can tell that the cutter is below the surface. Just, just the tip of it, which is what we want. Equal to what we planned on. Okay, so we're good there. So we're going to close the simulation. I feel confident that that's, that's going to work. Now I'm going to do the sides with the 2D adaptive quarter inch tool. So I'm going to select my setup. I'm going to go to to the adaptive clearing, it's this icon on the top. Select my tool, select quarter inch, find it under the type of flat, it's a flat mill, one fourth of an inch. And remember, you have to edit the settings that I gave to you. Once it's ed edited correctly, for the uh, dimensions and information, speeds and feeds, Dimensioning, tool dimensioning is all input. You'll select it. And now you want to find your profile, your side, side profile. So I'm going to select the bottom edge, the top edge, any kind of detailing that may have been left out, like these little um, drills. And it looks like to me, if I rotate it to the back, I'm going to select that one, make sure that one's selected. It looks like everything's pretty much selected. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK at the bottom. It's going to generate an adaptive toolpath that will cut along the profile, the side profile. And now we can go ahead and simulate that and analyze that to make sure it was done properly. Oops. So it looks like it starts off and goes, it starts above. And now, once it goes through that around once to show you um, that tool path, now it's going around it and cutting at the full flute length of the tool. So I could look at it as a top view too. That kind of give me some information. All right, Let's show you the tool paths. Okay. Once you feel confident that your simulation is correct, close out your simulation, select your setup, and go to post process. Um, post process is located right here. It has a G1, G2 icon. It's right next to simulate. Post process, select it. Make sure your post configuration or your post processor is selected Intellitech PLTW version 3 and that is the post processor that is used for that machine. If we were using the machine out on the shop floor, the Haas machine, we would use Haas, but in this case we're going to use this one. I would name it something descriptive like top lid, post it, Save it somewhere where you know it's saving. And there's your code that you'll need to use in your simulator. So now you can go to CNC Motion and test this code to see if it works. So last step.
pause it for a second. All right, so last step. So in the same link I provided you, you have a process file. So you can open that process file. And if you scroll all the way down to where we are, okay, you need to take that code that we just generated from CAN, right there, right, and open it up in CNC Motion. So in CNC Motion, you can right click on your stock, go to the stock tab right here, and put in input the dimensions of our stock. So that exact information. Next step, you need to set up a zero posi position. So you'll send your tool to the corner. And I don't think I can zoom in, but um, setup is right here, zero position. And make sure you, you're using tool one to do this. If you're not using tool one, then there's going to be a problem. You might have to go ahead and set up your library first. Make sure that you put tool one in with this information. And if you're using tool two, three, four, five, put the, that information in. But you have to put tool one's information in. And all the uh, details that I provided. And last step is then verify. So right here is the verify button. And it will quickly run through your code and test to see if it works. If it does, screenshot that information, add it to your portfolio. Final thing is, if I were you, once you did the top of the lid, I would go ahead and save this file as a new file. Well, sa save what you did and then save it as a new file and call it Panther Lid Bottom. And now you can delete your setup that you just did in, in your tool operations. Delete it all. You want to flip this around to the other side. There's your old setup. So I'm going to edit that old setup. And I want it up here now with the Z pointing up. But it looks like I have to change the orientation around um, so that my There we go. That's where my new setup will be. So I'll say OK. So there's my Y on the three and a quarter inch, X on the four and a quarter, and Z, uh, the top of Z. And now I'll go ahead and do my pocket with a half inch end mill right here with the settings I, I gave you. Same process. Good luck.